Hello, I'm here with Professor Damiano Brigo from Imperial College London and also the director of CAPCO Institute. How are you doing, Damiano? Uh, it's okay, thank you, Victoria. <laughs> You've just arrived at Risk Minds. Uh, exactly, yes. So can you tell me a little bit more about what you're actually going to be presenting at the conference? Uh, yes, I'm presenting my recent research on funding cost modeling. Yeah. And it's a new type of risk. Uh, has always been there, really, but never modeled properly uh, in the past years. And it's very non-linear and uh, creates uh, a sort of interconnectedness in the yeah. valuation system uh, for any financial institution and even across financial institutions, which is a new type of risk that has been and not been analyzed much in the past. And we're finding that even very simple features like the fact that everybody knows borrowing and lending rates being different and the proper accounting for collateral guarantees and default events, this mm -hmm. is creating an interconnectedness, as, as I mentioned earlier, that is very hard to analyze uh, mathematically. Right. It's a simple financial thing that generates a complex mathematical problem with non-linearities, recursion, and so on, and it's spreading through the financial system. So there's a way to work around it, but they're all very approximate, and they introduce mm. double counting and a number of errors. So I'm okay. going to deal with this, uh, trying to keep the maths at the minimum because <laughs> okay, it can be irritatingly <laughs> complex and sometimes you know you, you have the duty also as a scientist to explain uh, uh, things in an understandable way otherwise you don't yeah. do a service to science. Okay. Makes, make sure that means that lots more people listen and understand what you're saying yes, and get your that's message important. I'm sure. That's absolutely important. <laughs> and the Risk Minds is a very good forum for this yeah, because it's the right balance of between uh, technical thinking but also an over uh, you know a higher level of understanding yeah. and qualitative assessment so and judgmental ex expertise so I think it's great to Fantastic. be here. Well really. thank you. Oh, yeah. um, and I was also curious to hear about what the what you think the most uh, the biggest emerging threats are to the um, to the financial industry at the moment. I think there's a number of uh, uh, risks uh, among those the one I mentioned, but other ones like uh, really counterparty risk, the way collateral guarantees are spreading through the system, yeah. and you know con financial contagion, uh, the systemic link between institutions. Now CCPs are becoming paramount, yeah. but they could be you know the mother of all too big to fail if they're not managed properly, uh, even from a political political point of view. So there's a number of issues that are coming together and the thing I think that is dangerous is if we keep an uh, isolated culture on yeah. different areas. We need really to Connected become... Connected thinking. Yes. Uh, we need to talk to each other, basically. Mm -hmm. So the guy who is doing derivatives in, in a trading desk can no longer afford to ignore what's going on at the policy level in the bank, mm -hmm. in the treasury, in the other parts of the institutions, and in regulation, because the way risk is measured is often going to directly now you know, impact his PNL, either yeah. through funding and credit adjustments, but even through the bank policy, the treasury policy, and so on. So you need to include all the effects, and to do that properly, you don't need to understand just maths or probability or stochastic calculus mm -hmm. or statistics. You also need to understand economics, finance, the big picture how institutions view. work, policies, read the regulation, read yeah. 3,000 pages of, you know, <laughs> yeah. the ways the CSA work, uh, the CCP's rules, the initial and variation margin, all these aspects are becoming important. They need to be properly embedded into the uh, procedures and methodology. You need to be eclectic. That's that a bit of the new uh, thing I'm saying. I'm seeing. Uh, I always had to be a little bit eclectic in a way. That's always been there. But now it's more, more, it's stronger and stronger. I think. And with that in mind, this year we're actually celebrating our 20th anniversary. So I was wondering, how much do you think risk management is going to change in the next 20 years? You know, how much further are we going to we going to come? I think it's a in very interesting question. So the increased interconnectedness and e eclectism that is needed to face the risks these mm -hmm. days will prompt, I think, uh, a sort of cross-fertilization uh, uh, across the areas that will happen in places like this. Because this is exactly the place where risk minds, I mean, mm -hmm. where practitioner and academic meet and talk to each other. Yeah. There's not many forums that are like this. Uh, many typically academic conferences are only attended by academics who talk to each other. Yeah. A lot of things they, they all talk about uh, very long-term projects that mm -hmm. in the end don't get to <laughs> uh, impact yeah. the real world, really. And some do, actually, but not always. Then there are the purely practitioner conferences where no academics is there. And again, there is no, uh, let's say, interaction between the long-term and the short-term research, which is typically of academia versus industry. Okay. Here, we can see that happening. So that is very good, I think. And it's yeah. one of the reasons why even academics find, you know, attending this conference to be of great interest. Thing. We do get a very nice mix, you're right. And, oh, um, yes. and after hearing all this, I'm really looking forward to your presentation tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much, <laughs> Thank you, Damiano. Thank you. Cheers.